Stream Deck alternatives have been a hot topic for a very long time, and nobody really competed as well as Loop Deck. Well, now that Stream Deck came out with their Stream Deck Plus and added knobs, which the Loop Deck has had ever since it came out, Loop Deck is coming out with a more affordable version, and we're gonna unbox it and check it out. Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Chris. This is Coalition Gaming, and I like to teach you guys about repairing, setting up, and streaming from your PC. If you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. This is the Loop Deck Live S. As you can tell, it has less buttons and less knobs than the regular Loop Deck Live, but that's the reason it's going to cost $179 which is actually less than what the Stream Deck Plus is going to cost. This is the Loop Deck Live S next to the standard Stream Deck. Uh, let's have a look at any similarities and differences they may have. One thing you may see is that they have the same number of buttons, or the touch buttons that is, but the Loop Deck does have a advantage in that it has more buttons on the sides, as well as, as you can see, the knobs, and the knobs are buttons themselves. Now, one thing where the Stream Deck is a bit nicer is it has this multi-adjustable stand, and there you go like it's just you just set it on there and the stand works whereas the loop deck live s has sort of a f flimsy uh fixed stand that uh it's not the greatest but gets the job done this one is 179 and this one costs around 150 depending on whether it's on sale or not now you might think that the stream deck plus at 200 isn't that far away in price from the loop deck live s but you have to remember you are losing buttons this has more buttons than what the stream deck plus has so you're gonna have to figure out what you want and uh, go from there. I'll be mainly comparing these two because these ones are competitive on price. The Stream Deck Plus is more expensive than both of these. So if you're considering a Stream Deck like this one, the standard one, or the Loop Deck Live S like this one, you have to remember the advantages that the Loop Deck is going to have, and that's knobs and additional buttons along the sides, like I've mentioned. All right, let's just talk about what the Loop Deck Live S actually has on it. We have adjustable knobs that are also clicky knobs. We have tactile buttons here and 15 touch buttons. These don't press down like a Stream Deck does. They are just touch buttons, like as if you made a touch button on a, on a cell phone or something like that. But they are separated in a grid, so it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. The build quality of the whole thing is plastic, but it's a pretty decent build quality. But I got to say, the stand is pretty cheap. Um, gets the job done, but it's not the greatest. So I've been very familiar with the Loop Deck ever since I first saw them, and I know some people that use them as well. In my opinion, Loop Deck has always seemed to be more of the Stream Deck, but for like the professional creative and stuff like that, because you can do all sorts of stuff with, with color correction for photo editing, video editing. You can use it a little more for professional apps like that. And sure, the Stream Deck had ways to be used that way, but the Loop Deck seemed like it was designed more to be used that way than the Stream Deck was. But its functionality was always meant to compete with what the Stream Deck had to offer for your average streamer or your average content creator, as well as your average creative professional. And so the Loop Deck Live S is really going to bring in uh, a more accessible price point to get more of everyone on board with something like that. Because at least originally, the regular Loop Deck at $250-ish was kind of pricey. But uh, this guy is definitely going to help with that. But in case you need more functionality or you want more of everything of what this has to offer, the Loop Deck Live is out there for you guys. The Loop Deck Live has more knobs, more buttons, and more functionality with the touchscreen buttons. Even though it has a few less buttons, you get greater functionality with this greater build quality. And uh, it will come at a little bit of a higher price, but it's just the next option in the stack. To connect this to your computer in the box is included a right angle USB C to C cable. But if your computer doesn't have a Type-C connection or you just don't want to use your Type-C connection, they also include a Type-C to Type-A adapter so that you can connect it to any USB port on your computer. Let me show you a few things that this can do and how I would use it. All right, so a quick rundown of the Loop Deck and its software. From the box, you already get some pre-programmed shortcuts and things. Um, and as you can see here, there's the OBS, launch OBS button. There's the Twitch button that'll bring you to your Twi Twitch creator dashboard. The YouTube button that'll just launch YouTube. You can uh, mute your system, mute your mic. If you go into the mute mic and actually, or just any source it looks like that happens to be in the Windows audio mixer, you can mute those by touching the buttons there. If you mute there, then you can mute anything there. So basically microphone is mute input going to any of these. 
uh, speaker is mute output going to any of these. So that's kind of nice. You have that control in there and that you can add to that control in if you wanted to uh, explore it more. The profile and plugins button, that actually brings up, I believe, the, uh, the Loop Deck Marketplace. And the Marketplace is very powerful because uh, you have access to all sorts of stuff, as you can see here. DaVinci Resolve Color Panel plugins, uh, PZ, PTZ Optics plugins that will give you pan, tilt, zoom control from the buttons and knobs on this, which is kind of neat. Stuff for Reaper, Audacity, InDesign. This is what makes this so awesome and, uh, well, useful for professionals. Plugins for GIMP, plugins for uh, Premiere Pro, which we're going to show you. Photoshop as well. Affinity, if you're not in the Adobe ecosystem, you can go Affinity or DaVinci be on there. And uh, of course, OBS and OBS functionality is already built into the software. So of course, one of the default functions of this is going to be control with OBS Studio. As you can see, you can select scene collection, scenes, general audio control, volume mixer, mixer mutes. Uh, you can turn sources off and on and uh, you can even enable studio mode, toggle recording and streaming, transitions, virtual camera control, stuff like that. I've quickly set up a scene change, which you can see right now. If I do it right here, I can go to this scene and then I could go back to that from the buttons on there. And that would be the basic functionality of that. But like I said, you have a lot of control here. There will be a full tutorial on how to use some of this control stuff coming. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Now for some more of the professional functionality of what this has to offer, I have a file open in Photoshop right there. And if you wanted to manipulate stuff in Photoshop, you can use the plugin feature of this that's available through the Adobe Creative Cloud. And now, now you know, here is that you can press all sorts of photo editing options. Some of the most common things you're gonna be doing in Photoshop or any kind of photo editing is messing around with brushes and brush sizes and erasing. So if we wanted to do the brush, we can select there and you can see I'm drawing on Linus's face right now. But if I wanted a bigger area, I can adjust this knob right here to get an even bigger area on the brush. Now, if I wanted to erase that, I can press the button to erase and control it that way. But I can also control the size of that eraser that way you can move through things a lot quickly if those are tools that you use commonly what's cool is that loop deck included this default photoshop page setup so if this is all the function that you would want out of uh, loop deck and photoshop and lightroom use and any of that stuff it's really awesome that it's already that way for you nice and simple but if you wanted to customize any of it each one of these squares can be customized with whatever tool you want now in Adobe Premiere, you do have to enable the loop deck as a control surface there and possibly download the plugin from the marketplace available in loop deck. But once it's all set up, again, there'll be a tutorial coming. You have control to do all sorts of stuff, shortcuts to edit, shortcuts to cut, and even shortcuts to zoom in and out of your timeline, as well as shortcuts to scrub through your timeline. Both of those are incredibly useful functions to have on the knob. I'm really excited to play with these more and experiment with them more. I know they can do a lot more than what I've shown, including far more control in Windows, including macros and stuff like that. I'm gonna have a tutorial video coming on any cool tricks I figure out how to do with these, so make sure you stay tuned and subscribe for that. If you guys would like to pick any of these up yourselves, I'll have everything linked in the description below. And remember, if you wanted one with more buttons and more functionality, more knobs and everything, and higher build quality, the regular Loop Deck Live is out there, but as far as competitive budget option, the Loop Deck Live S is the one to get. Hit that like button if you're a content creator and you think that these are the kind of thing that you would use in your setup. Click this video if you like what these can do but want to do it more geared towards audio. There's a budget option out there that has massive, awesome audio and stream control. And this time, yeah, it has knobs, but it also has faders.